back to my channel. Today I want to show you how to create a faux quilted spine for your journal. I'm just measuring out how wide I want the spine to be and then I'll trim down the cardboard um, to be the right dimensions. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I try to do weekly junk journal with me videos um, or little tutorials like this. Uh, I do um, thrift store hauls and just other fun things that are related to journaling and uh, vintage and crafting and all that. So just hit the subscribe button below. Um, for this, I'm actually just using a uh, like a rigid mailer, and I'm going to um, actually make it two pieces thick. So I'm going to glue these pieces together so that the spine will be a little bit sturdier. And I keep forgetting <laughs> um, to like finish cutting before I try to put my my uh, cutter away. Um, I'm also going to reinforce the spine with a piece of Tyvek. Um, you can get this Tyvek from uh, any um, post office. Uh, you can also order them online if, if you're in the United States. Um, you can order them online at uh, the post, of, post office website. So just Google post office um, and you can order them for free. So now here I'm just gluing the pieces together. And I am, I didn't show this to you guys in the video, but I am just using Fabri-Tac, which I really like. It's a strong bond and it like, it grabs really fast. So use that for a lot. Um, so I just showed you it wasn't very uh, exact on my cutting. So I'm just trimming it with my scissors kind of off frame. Okay, so to make this even on either side, I, I usually fold it in half and then just kind of loosely, all this will be covered eventually with fabric. And so it doesn't have to be exactly right, but we want it to be loosely in the middle of the spine. So here I'm just gluing this to the Tyvek, and the Tyvek will be on the outside of the journal. So you can see I'm just like pressing that down really well. Uh, if you want, you can use like an old credit card um, or something to just kind of spread that glue around. But again, mine's going to be covered with fabric, so I'm not that worried about getting all the bubbles of glue out. Um, so here you want like a gap between the spine piece and the cover. And so normally I use a template and I probably should have done that in the tutorial, but, um, I've done these so many times now that I can kind of just eyeball it. Uh, and so you just want the pieces to have a gap of, about equal to the width of um, of the actual board. So uh, just leave a gap in between this, the back cover, front cover, and the spine so that it will actually close like a book. So here I'm just making sure all the pieces are straight and that it actually closes. This is where the gap is very important. And you can see the light shining through um, a little bit. This is possibly the most important step. So if your book, um, like one of the covers is uneven, then your book will not stand up straight and the covers will not close properly. So pay very close attention to that. Okay, so here 
I have pulled out my base piece of fabric, which is just a like a piece of muslin. And then I have all these fabric scraps that were kind of um, like this teal, turquoise. Uh, and then I decided I wanted to create another base layer that was colored. And so I've just like loosely glued this blue fabric. Um, it's like a gingham under where I'll attach all my scraps. I'm just trying to find a layout for all my scraps that I like. And again, this does not have to be perfect. I feel like um, the scrappier it is, uh, the more appeal it has, possibly. Um, so yeah, after you find a layout that you like, and I just kind of tried to make sure that all of the parts of the spine were actually covered. Um, and after you find a layout that you like, I just glued it down with just a little dot of Fabri-Tac to keep everything in place. So then after I glue it down, I will actually take it to my sewing machine, which I did not record, um, but I'll just explain what I did. Uh, I just ran lines around the borders of each piece. And so what it did was create this messy quilted look, um, but it's not actually quilted because the pieces are not technically sewn together aside from tacking them onto the base fabric. So I'm just going to glue down my last little pieces here and then I'll take it to the sewing machine and you guys will see the finished product. So here we go. I'm going to hold it up to the camera. Oh, I had to attach a piece to the bottom um, so that I had enough to wrap around to the back of the book. So that's something that I learned in doing this. Make sure that your base piece is long enough to wrap around. Um, and I actually just glued that on, so it's not it's not actually sewn on, but just a word to the wise <laughs> to do that. So I'm just using my Fabri-Tac again and making sure it's kind of lined up properly. Um, my piece was pretty much exactly long enough to cover the outside of the book, but not have any of the blue wrap around to the inside. Um, you can always make that colored base piece wrap around and just extend it on your white base or whatever color you choose, um, extend it on to like where it would wrap around in, into the interior of the book. So now I'm just gluing on the inside and you can see I'm pressing my fabric into the spine there, um, into the gaps in the spine. I didn't want, I wanted the blue to not be stuck to the inside, so that was what I was doing there, I was getting it unstuck. Before the glue set, um, you do have a tiny window <laughs> with this glue to adjust things, and um, so that's what I was doing. Now, I like all the little frayed pieces on my journals. I like scrappy and um, like shabby chic is very much a style that I like. So um, here I'm showing you, I'm using my pinking shears, which if you don't have pinking shears, it's no big deal. Uh, but I just didn't want the bottom to fray and like fray all the way into my spine so that's why I use pinking shears on the tops and bottoms usually um, but the Fabri-Tac or any glue that you use should also help with that so if you don't have pinking shears it's not a big deal 
Um, here I'm just trying to make it to where my spine, like the fabric piece, does not bubble when I close it. And I actually did not get this perfect, um, but it's my own journal, so I'm not really that concerned with it. Um, my own journals are usually like a learning place and uh, a place where I experiment before building journals um, to sell. So here we go, here's the finished product. From this point, just choose your preferred binding method and attach your signatures. I used a no-sew binding from Johanna Clough, and I will include a link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.